Hey, I'm Eric, I'm from Curbside Cycle, and today we're gonna to talk about carrying your child with a bicycle. Let's begin now. So there's a lot of different ways to carry a child on a bike. And the big difference between all of these methods is a question of safety. And then the problem is, in North America at least, is that so many options that are available aren't actually designed for riding in a city, but they're actually meant for riding in the suburbs. And that's because most of the bicycle industry in North America is designed for the recreational cyclists. What we're gonna describe here is a, a spectrum between the least safe and the most safe, the trailer being the least safe of all. On that note, we're gonna start with the bicycle trailer. So why would we say the trailer is unsafe? From its design point of view, it was never really designed for riding in a city. The trailer was designed for riding in suburban recreational bike paths. That is explicitly what it was designed for. When you take it into the city, you are suddenly at risk of drivers not seeing the trailer. So a trailer, despite having flags on them and whatnot, they sit below the driver's eye level, which means they can't, they might be able to see you, but they can't see the trailer. So we've had multiple cases where customers made eye contact with driver that was turning into their lane and didn't see the trailer and started to drive right into the trailer, causing, you know, panic with the cyclist and those cyclists very quickly came in and bought a different mode of transportation. So the other big concern about a trailer is that it's not impact resistant. And impact resistance is something we're gonna cover when we talk about cargo bikes. What it means basically is that if the trailer was to get hit, it would crumple with the children inside and that's just downright dangerous. So what are the pros of using a trailer? Well, we've already mentioned that it's good for recreational trail use. On a recreational trail, you're not sharing space with other cars and you can freely explore the world uh, with your kids in tow. If you're riding in a city, trailers are fine if you're carrying groceries, but certainly not kids. So moving on from trailers, we're gonna talk now about child seats. And of course, child seats have been around for a very, very long time. In fact, they might be the oldest method of carrying a child on a bicycle. So the measure of a good child seat is how it connects to the bicycle. The more the child seat is part of the bicycle frame, the better the child seat is. Now, most child seats connect to the rear rack and the rear rack on most bicycles is not part of the bicycle frame. It's an accessory that's usually attached by at least four upwards of 12 small bolts that can all go loose and vibrate, causing the rack to uh, fall off the bike and subsequently also your child. So brands like Bowbike, which is a Dutch brand, it's one of the oldest uh, child seat uh, makers in the world. They make a child seat that bolts to your frame and it uses just four heavy duty machine bolts. And that really is the way we prefer to have your, your child onto the bicycle. It also allows you to still use your rear rack as well. So you don't have to make the option of groceries one day or child, you can do both. Now, child seats compared to a trailer, of course, puts the child with you at the driver's uh, level of eyesight. So they can see both you and the child. Already now you're a lot safer. But the problem with child seats is that it changes the balance of the bike. No bike was really designed as if there was a child seat in the original sort of CAD drawings. It's just not there as part of the imaginary design process that put your bike together. And this is expressed by something called wheelbase. So the issue with using a child seat on a regular bike is a question of wheelbase. And wheelbase is the measure of a bike's length, which is from the front axle to the rear axle. Now, why is wheelbase important? Well, because the longer the wheelbase is, the more weight you're putting onto the bike is displaced over a larger surface area. And the more weight is displaced over surface area, the more stability you get. So the most important thing if you're buying a child seat for your bicycle is to make sure again that the interface between the child seat and the bike is really, really solid. The second thing is to take a look at your bike and make sure that it has a longer wheelbase. So like a mountain bike or a hybrid is a good idea. Bikes like fixed gears or road bikes, not so smart. So the one thing that's really important when buying a child seat is that it fits onto your bike and that's gonna take a professional opinion. If you're looking at buying a child seat, we recommend uh, contacting us first and we're happy to guide you through the process and let you know if it's gonna fit properly. So a lot of our talk so far has been rather functional, concerned around safety, but there's also just like an aesthetic dimension to carrying your child. You wanna explore the world with them and have a conversation. And perhaps one of the biggest cons of using a child seat is that your child is behind you. Maybe looking at your sweaty back or your backpack. They wanna 
they want to talk, you want to talk to them. Uh, you want to point out something that you see and you want them to see it too. You kind of lose that conversation when a child is in the child seat. So we mentioned impact resistance when it comes to a trailer. Is a child seat more impact resistant than a trailer? The answer is yes. It, once again, it depends on which brand you buy. For instance, we do the bow bike seats from Holland, which are double walled plastic. So they are designed to sustain impacts, but nowhere near as much as say a cargo bike, which has you know a, a sort of a bubble around your child of some sort of impact resistant layer. Now we're gonna to move to the long tails. Now the long tail is a very North American invention. You don't see a lot of them in Europe and we're gonna cover that in one second. So the long tail is a big improvement on just a regular bike in terms of wheelbase. So there's that word again. The wheelbase on a long tail is really, really long. So the whole weight of the bike and all the weight you're putting onto the bike is displaced over a really big surface area and that makes you feel really, really safe. The great thing about a long tail too is that it's actually made for kids. So you're not sort of putting on an accessory that's that's that sort of an afterthought. The whole sort of interface of the rear rack system has all sorts of plug and play options. So if you've got a growing family from a toddler to a large kid, even an adult, there's all sorts of configurations you can make to make sure that everybody's sitting back there safe. The other great thing about a long tail is that you can still do the groceries. So whether that's on the rear rack or on some sort of front rack, you can both do the daycare pickup and a quick grocery trip on your way back home. So what are the cons of using a long tail? Once again, perhaps, the biggest problem with long tails is that you can't have that conversation with your kids again. Once again, they're right behind you. So you're pointing out something you want them to see and all they can see is your back. That really is the big difference aesthetically between say uh, using a front loading cargo bike uh, or a long tail. But one of the big safety concerns with a long tail is that unlike a cargo bike, they're not impact resistant. So they're not designed to actually have some sort of barrier around your children which is designed to sustain a certain level or measure of impact. And that becomes a categorical difference between a long tail and a cargo bike. A cargo bike is actually designed fundamentally for impact resistance. And if you think about it, that's really, really important. A long tail is a North American invention, which was designed in some ways almost to accept the reality of a world that has sort of some bike lanes and no bike lanes. And it's just meant to sort of negotiate that and make compromises. And the compromise that you're really making with the long tail is you've got a bike that feels much better in traffic, much better than say a trailer or a um, bike with a child seat. And then that takes us to the front loading cargo bike. So front loading cargo bikes have their origin in Holland and that probably shouldn't be surprising given that Holland is the world's most mature and experienced cycling culture. And for that reason, we really trust products that come from Holland. They really lead the world in terms of what a cycling city can look like in terms of infrastructure, but also in terms of the products being used. So that's the key difference between say North America now and Holland is that Holland has the safest bikes and the safest infrastructure, whereas we have sort of up and coming infrastructure and sort of up and coming bikes. It's our point to really press that it makes more sense to be riding the world's safest bike. And that's why we really love the front loading cargo bikes. So I've already said that the categorical difference between say a long tail or all these other bikes is impact resistance. So let's just talk a little bit about that. So in the European Union, if you're designing a cargo bike, it has to pass a whole bunch of tests. And the critical test is that these bikes are able to sustain an impact of 40 kilometers per hour. So it's been shown in most uh, transportation studies for both North American cities and European cities that the average sort of speed a car goes through in gridlock is about 16 kilometers per hour. So a box that's made uh, to sustain impacts of 40 kilometers per hour is really, really strong. So different companies will use different methods uh, or different materials rather to create that impact resistance. So companies like Babo will use wood or Carcon will use uh, EPP foam, which is the same stuff used in helmets. And the list goes on. Now, aesthetically, of course, the most beautiful thing about riding a front loading cargo bike is your child's right there, right in front of you. You can have a conversation, point out things on the road. It's just creating memories that your child is never gonna forget. Like we said, with long tail bikes, the cargo bike once again has a really long wheelbase. So you'll see bikes like our Urban Arrow or Bullet or Risa Mueller, and they're all gonna have like about an eight feet long length. And of course, when you're buying a cargo bike, one of the biggest sort of forks in the road as you're sort of saying, yeah, yeah, I wanna do this, but which kind do I wanna get? 
is the question between three-wheeled or two-wheeled. And the difference between two-wheeled and three-wheeled is really a question of handling versus stability. So obviously a three-wheeled cargo bike is gonna be more stable given that there's three points in the ground at all times. Two-wheeled cargo bikes, of course, feel more like a regular bike, but they do require just a little bit of learning curve. And I really just mean a little bit. It's just a different bike from your regular bike, so it's gonna feel a bit different. It's just a little bit longer, and it just requires just a touch more control, especially when you're riding at slow speeds. But once again, just a touch. What are the cons of using a cargo bike? Well, they're big. So you do have to make sure that if you're storing it outside, that you have really high security. And one of the big pluses about buying a European front-loading cargo bike is that they're actually made for perpetual outdoor storage. And that's in you know Nordic climates, where of course we get snow, people salt the roads, things get really, really cold. Like a long tail, the great thing about most cargo bikes as well is that they're modular. So they're designed for a growing family. So unlike a long tail where you really can only start with a toddler, a European front-loading cargo bike is actually designed for use with an infant. So whether you want to do that or not, it's just there as an option. The child will be safe. You can put an actual car seat into a special holder which will mount into that impact resistant box and now you've got all these layers of impact resistance the, the car seat the box itself everything connected with really really high quality engineered interfaces as a child grows up there's toddler seat options as a child grows even bigger there's all sorts of different bench options you can sometimes install a whole another set of benches in the box on some particular models letting you now carry up to four kids which is pretty amazing so every every single bike is going to have some sort of modularity that really recognizes that you have a growing family. So I hope that as you watch this video, you become convinced that indeed a front-loading cargo bike is the best way to go when it comes to that safety question. We think cycling in the city is amazing, but of course it brings with, with it all of these questions like, how do I carry stuff? And it's not just groceries, in this case, it's children. And that then re really brings in this whole issue of safety. These really are designed with the same seriousness as a car, the difference being that this is a bike that you pedal. So at Curbside, we've made it our mission to ensure that whatever option you get or can afford, that it's the best in class. With child seats, we carry the bull bike brand. They're from Holland, they're double walled plastic. They meet the highest level of German safety regulations. When it comes to long tails, we scour the world to make sure that we're bringing in the best option. And increasingly, we're starting to bring in European options that just have that extra level of safety and handling. Now, our specialty at Curbside is the front-loading cargo bikes from Europe, and we've made it our mission to source these bikes in all sorts of options based on sort of different use case scenarios. Now, the one option that we don't carry is trailers, and that's because we are a really self-identified transportation store, and we don't feel trailers are safe for riding in traffic. So if you're looking for a trailer for recreation, use, of course, you can find us at many other bike stores. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you learned a lot from watching this video. And if you have any questions, please hit us up. Want to learn more about our cargo bikes, city bikes, and all sorts of transportation options for riding in a city? Hit that subscribe button.